Hello, and welcome to this video on baking bread and yeast. This is distinct from past videos which focused on the role of yeast in brewing. The major difference between brewing and baker's yeast is the lack of alcohol resistance needed and the focus on carbon dioxide production. In other words, the aerobic metabolism of yeast. This recipe was fairly standard. One part flour, two thirds of a part water, 10 grams sugar, and two teaspoons of yeast. Here it was one kilogram of flour and 700 milliliters of water. Mixed with a heavy spoon and then kneaded after it was left to stand for 10 minutes. This soaks up excess moisture, making the dough ball much easier to work with, and is useful for features later on. Specifically, in this case, gluten, among other proteins and polymers, forms a mesh, and this keeps everything relatively closely bound together. By physical force and hydrolysis, the bread dough components mesh together. Hydrolysis is the process by which hydrogen interacts with other compounds, causing them to break up and bond using the hydrogen atom as a bridge. It's facilitated largely by that excess moisture. The entire process distinguishes the strengths and weaknesses of baker's yeast, as distinct from brewer's yeast. Baker's yeast takes advantage of the complex protein composites and bread making requires it. These would make unpleasant flavours when brewing, but they often make the characteristic flavours of unique bread types. The addition of a small amount of sugar in this process is to metaphorically awaken the dried yeast. It does not provide a sugar substrate for the bread to rise. The bread rises through the extracellular enzymes which break down the wheat flour into starch chains, then starch segments, and then finally into glucose. The gluten, proteins, chemicals, and lipids create chains around the CO2, which is normally generated as part of the cellular cycle. This leads to bubbles, and then larger pockets. These expand rapidly under heat when the bread is baked, and this creates the light nature of many bread varieties. In theory, every pocket or bubble should be generated by at least one yeast cell. The process of baking, and especially at the temperature used, leads to the yeast cells lysing through heat shock, dehydration, and denaturation of proteins. These are not concerns for the home brewer, and especially for home brewing yeast. Heat is avoided, and the proteins do not denature. The cells only lyse under unfavorable conditions, and denaturation is protected by yeast flocculation. Thank you for watching this video on the major features and use of baker's yeast. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions you have below.